G'day mates, today's video is going to be covering the insane new update that just saw the Stinger SMG and Combat SMG nerfed, the tank removed from the competitive playlist, and performance mode low meshes fixed so we have mobile builds back. Also, if you're having a bug with high meshes or the other random modes, don't worry, I have the fix for you. So what to talk about, let's just jump into it. Let's start off with the actual tweet from Epic Games to start breaking it down and then I'll go into each point in more detail. So Fortnite status tweeted out, we've made some meaningful changes to the following items. Combat and Stinger SMG damage to players and structures reduced. Combat SMG headshot damage reduced to match the Stinger. MK7 and Combat AR damage to players and structures reduced ahead of donation board voting. And then Fortnite competitive also tweet out saying that the tank had been vaulted in the competitive playlist. So. Let's start off with the first point. Combat and Stinger SMG to players and structures reduced. How much is this? So the Combat SMG now does two less damage at all rarities and the Stinger SMG does one less damage at all rarities. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot and yes, the Combat SMG and Stinger SMG are still very strong. They are still good items, but every single time we get these nerfs, they get a little bit closer to being very, very balanced in my opinion. I would still argue fire rate potentially is the biggest issue with these SMGs, the bullets going through walls and then using them to spray structures and the clip size where you can put half a clip into the wall, jump in and then still have half a clip to kill someone with. But this is a huge, huge step forward and I'm very, very happy with it. I played a whole bunch of arena today, a little bit of a flex. I have just gotten Champions Division in Arena, so I have been grinding enough to then say and give my opinion on these weapons. I've played around with them plenty. And yes, before you jump all over it, I have been playing Tree Arenas with some very, very good players. I'm not going to try and pretend I did it in solos, but I've, I've either been at the receiving end of these SMGs or I've been the one using it. So I've been playing the game enough to give a good opinion on them. They are getting very, very close to being in a good spot. Again, I think clip size and fire rate would be the most necessary nurse for the combat SMG and Stinger right now. But right now, they don't hit as as hard as what they did a few days ago, especially with that point number two, the headshot multiplier on the combat. That's the big one. The headshot multiplier on the combat SMG used to be times two. Now it's times 1.5. And this is big. So before, if you were shooting a combat SMG, it could do upwards of 48 damage headshots. 48 damage with every single headshot. That is ridiculous. If you had someone who just spawned in, you could kill them in two and a half bullets. That is insane. So the combat SMG headshot multiplier is now 1.5 times just like the stinger and that has really brought both the smgs a lot closer i would still argue the combat smg is stronger than the stinger smg because most times when using the smg you're using it very very close range where the extra recoil doesn't matter a lot but with the combat smg getting two damage nerf and the multiplier where stinger smg only got a one damage nerf and no multiplier change if you're a fan of the stinger smg i'm starting to see why more people might run it especially for that like more mid-range the extra recoil on the combat does get very hard to control but i'm still always picking up the combat SMG because most often I'm trying to box fight. I'm hitting a pump shot and I'm jumping in my SMG to finish them off or I'm playing, you know, that like one to two boxes distance. I don't see myself using it over that because I absolutely love the burst rifle right now. The burst rifle is in a really, really good spot. Burst rifle, combat, uh, sorry, striker, pump shotgun and in combat SMG is my three weapon loadout to a T. That is what I'm running basically every single game right now. The MK7 and combat AR damage to players and structures being reduced is obviously ahead of the donation board. They are aren't going to be going into competitive. It doesn't affect competitive at all, but there will be a vote soon in game to bring back either the MK7 or Combat AR. So it's cool to see they've nerfed both of them preemptively and then we're going to get them put in after the vote. So I can't really test them out too much. Can't play around with them, but obviously the SMG was the big one. So let me know in the comments down below. Are you happy about the SMG changes? Obviously a lot of pros and people in the competitive scene have not been enjoying the spray meta. You guys have already heard this a bunch before, but a lot of casuals have been liking it. And I feel like we're getting close to a pretty happy middle ground. Trust me, the SMGs are still really, really strong. They're a big focus of the season and the meta right now. Like, they are definitely still worth picking up, but they're getting close to that point where they're not just a complete beam where you're hitting people for like 50 damage headshots at the fire rate of the combat SMG. Honestly, I'm getting very happy with these changes right now. Tanks being removed from competitive, that is a no-brainer. This obviously needed to happen. I have argued the tanks aren't one of the worst vehicles we've had. I've had people comparing them to the mechs or the UFOs, and they're just not that bad. You can shoot the flap at the front to then expose the driver. You can shoot the engines at the back to stop the moving. You can shoot the wheels. You can shoot the, the gunner. But at the same time, have I died in incredibly frustrating ways to the tanks that I just didn't enjoy whatsoever? 
Yes. Can you still not drive them with double movement on mouse and keyboard or on a joystick like I play? Yes. So I have not even been able to drive the tanks yet. So obviously I have not been enjoying versing them and I can't even use them. But I feel like almost everyone here can agree while the tanks are like, you know, they're, they're an, a core item of the game right now, the storyline of war. They make sense in pubs. And again, they're very frustrating to verse in pubs. I was versing tanks when playing no builds mode with my wife. And again, didn't have too much fun with it. But I, I, I understand why they're in the game. Casuals love rolling up as a squad with the homies in the tank and having fun, but they don't belong in competitive. On spawn, most players will be able to take them out if they have good positioning, a good aim, which most pros do, but you're using a lot of ammo to take them down that I would argue is unnecessary. And if you can manage to get one into end game, that is where they're obnoxious. People would base them up on the mountains, on hills, and just shoot infinite rockets at enemies. It just, it was a little bit too much. It makes sense to take out a competitive. I don't think anyone is going to disagree with that one. So big, big change from Epic and across the board, this update was a big W. The last part about this update is one that so many people have been asking for. We have the return of performance mode, low meshes. In case you're on console, you just don't know what low meshes are. Basically, it's like the mobile builds on PC. It is the best way to get maximum frames, especially on older or less than optimal builds. If you're running like an older PC or something like that, it is so helpful as you guys know. It's also the best way to get reduced input delay. It's just what a lot of pros and players play on because even though mobile builds maybe don't look as nice, even though some people love the aesthetic, yes, you can't see through wood builds and your awareness goes down. Down a little bit. I personally enjoy using them because my game just feels so much smoother and more responsive. They are back. You can finally launch with low meshes. You probably did notice a potential bug though with high meshes and even DX11 and DX12. If you're launching the game and you're not performance mode low meshes, but your game looks like you have mobile builds, it's a very, very easy fix. Just put your view distance up to medium, restart your game, load back in, and you will have regular high mesh meshes or DX11 or DX12. Again, if you don't want to run mobile builds, just make sure you do do that medium view distance is not going to make your game run that much worse you're not going to tank frames your input delay isn't going to go through the roof so if you do want to use high meshes or dx11 and dx12 view distance to medium and you're golden don't stress too much but i love using performance mesh uh for, sorry performance mode low meshes so i'm so so happy to see this one back i really hope they do something with performance mode for console i'd love to see more console optimization again being able to turn shadows off would already be amazing not having all the graphics on insane levels but unfortunately for you guys we have talked about that as we're pretty sure being an issue with Sony and Microsoft wanting their games to look as good as possible despite the fact that so many players would buy the console that would let them optimize their game settings for competitive Fortnite they would sell so many consoles if Xbox or PlayStation just let you guys turn your settings down because you would get such higher frame rate you guys have been asking my opinion on the season. I've been giving it throughout the videos, but I think honestly, there's only really two things that need to be adjusted now to have this season be so, so incredibly good. First off, I touched on is the turrets being able to infinitely shoot rockets. It's just a bit annoying at the moment. You could be based up in a beautiful spot on high ground, on the mountain, next to Tilted. You're ready to go. It's a 60 player zone. It's fourth zone, but someone's on top of the blimp just over and over and over again. Every time it hits you, it does 100 damage and it blows you out of your builds and you're going to get lobby focused by everyone around you. Just like the tank, I think everyone can agree that doesn't belong in competitive. Shooting yourself, launching yourself as a, as a projectile to get rotation around the map or if you really do want to go for that big, crazy, fun, hilarious play of launching yourself into their base, I am all for that. I love the cannons, but I think being able to infinitely shoot 100 damage rockets that are going to blow people out of their builds builds in competitive is just not a good idea, especially when these cannons are based up on high ground. So there's absolutely no way to push them and there's absolutely no way to defend yourself against them. That is the definition of an uncompetitive item and an item that doesn't belong in competitive when there's absolutely no counterplay to it. So I'm going to say that we need to get the turrets kind of like not being able to fire the rockets. I don't want to take them out completely because again, I love them and they're one of the main reasons why I'm so happy with the current map right now, but I don't think in competitive they should be able to shoot rockets or they there needs to be some kind of balance or nerf to them. I don't know how you would nerf them. Like maybe they only do like 50 damage to structures, but then you still have a guy just eating all your mats by just spamming you with rockets over and over again. So I just, again, maybe let me know in the comments down below. Do you have a way to fix the rockets? But I feel like just having them only launch players in competitive could be a good way to solve that one. The last item, and you guys are not going to be surprised to hear this, is the cow catcher. 
throw it on the front of a vehicle, especially in end game, and you can literally just do donuts through rotating zones, breaking every single build. You just make, you don't have to have any momentum. You just slightly drive forward. You could have like the car just roll forward at half a kilometer an hour and boom, you're straight through the wall. It's just, it's not balanced. You can throw them on every single vehicle except for the tanks. I mean, some of these IO cars, you can have a chunk of tire IO car with a cow catcher on the front. It's just ridiculous. In pubs is great. It's hilarious. Going for ram plays and again, rolling up with your homies in a squad it's funny i get it but in comp it just doesn't belong and also throwing it down on the ground while players are getting better at countering it when it's thrown on the ground if you play on cones you can edit cones to break them it's still just a bit of a joke you just walk up throw it on a wall it breaks any wall it has 800 health it's indestructible you can't build there the player pumps you in the mouth or what a lot of comp players are doing is they're just walking up to people who are near them in bases throwing them on the wall from there one by one and getting the whole lobby to focus them because they literally cannot build there and if they try to tarp backwards they're still getting shot at so they're just again not a skillful item like i said they just have absolutely no counterplay there's no way to predict if someone's going to do it to you the only way to avoid them right now is to constantly be based up seven layers off the ground and if anyone starts to base up within a few boxes of you you focus them but uh, you can't expect people to play like that especially when tournaments are coming back we're going to have stacked end games with storm surge lobbies they just they don't belong in the game in competitive they're fun for pubs i get it but just i think almost everyone can agree we need him out of comp. But other than those two changes, those are the only two changes I'd really love to see. Again, maybe a bit more of a nerf to the combat SMG, but we are looking like we have a very, very good season on our hands. Also, in case you guys are unaware, because a lot of people are, if you guys are seeing this and you're from EU, make sure you guys are playing in the Evaluation Cup. It's taking place today. I'll be watching it on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Antics. We get to watch another tournament before we have the Cash Cups kickoff. And this is the first ever Evaluation Cup in EU. It's not region locked. So if you're from the other regions and you want to give it a go, make sure you guys do. Apparently, the requirements are going to be Champions Division from last season. So don't worry. If you're not Champions Division, yes, you should be able to queue up. Just go to EU, check if it's in your compete tab, I believe it's going to be two hours, seven games. Top 50 teams are going to qualify and then we'll have four set lobby games after an hour break at the end of that. And it's usually a $2,000 prize pool. Top five teams get $400, but it's a chance for you guys to try out a tournament with the new meta after the update. So again, I'll be doing a viewing party. Check out my Twitch channel. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys, that does it for another video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please chuck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one.